working together to make such a successful event. I mean, this is the 11th uh, SAT fundraising, so, you know, congratulations. And actually, I'm super excited to see Tenzin Doma here. I'm so glad you got her here, because I'm like a big fan right now. I used to watch all your YouTube videos, you know, like seriously. So I'm, I'm really glad that you're here and you have an amazing voice. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, also this is my third Thanksgiving in America because obviously I'm from England. And um, so I, you know, Thanksgiving doesn't really mean much to me because I'm British and, but it's just an amazing holiday for me to have. And spend time with my relatives in Brooklyn. So this, that's what I did this week. This week. I, um, I visited my relatives in Brooklyn and I haven't seen them for like a while since Lhasa, right? So there was a lot of catching up to do. Um, and of course, uh, Tibetan internal politics was one of the topics that came up. So, you know, they were a little bit worried about me because um, they were hearing some of the, uh, some rumors and gossip about SFT. And so I had to explain to them that that's all it is. Right, that's all it is. And, but after some of the discussions that night, I realized that, you know, some of these, these kinds of talks actually can be quite harmful to the vital work that SFT do. And more importantly, it is actually potentially seriously dangerous to, to the movement and to the work that His Holiness and so many other Tibetans have worked so hard to build. So, you know, I feel like I have to address these, um, these issues head on because I feel like if I don't, then I'm, you know, giving a disservice to the movement and for us to potentially do great things for Tibet. So, I mean, as you know, the Tibetan community in exile is a small one, right? You know, we know everybody around the world. And so when the Tibetan elections come up, it's, it can be stressful for some people, right? And it can be stressful because everyone has an opinion. Everyone has a candidate they want to win. You know, everyone's passionate, and passion sometimes leads to like heat debates, arguments, um, heated arguments, and that's natural, right? And that is good because that's democracy. That's what democracy is all about: exchanging different ideas and views um, to help our society evolve and you know and strengthen and get better, right? But also, it has the potential to do um, to bring to bring hurt to people. People get hurt, right, through these like difficult discussions and whatnot. And I've been, recently, these last few months, I've been observing this, and I have seen, you know, um, strained relationships and whatnot. And to be honest, SFT is feeling it right now. We're feeling it, and um, so I really just want to set the record straight where SFT stand on the Tibetan elections. Um, because I keep hearing, uh, I mean, um, some Umilam sub supporters saying that um, SFT endorsed Lugajam and that we financially supported his uh, campaign. And on the other side, I hear Rangzen, some Rangzen advocates or supporters um, complaining that we didn't endorse Lugajam and that we should have because he's Rangzen. <laughs> so once and for all, I want to set the record straight where SFT's you know, where SFT stands in the Tibetan elections. At SFT, you know, we have thousands of members across the world, Tibetans and non-Tibetans. And we all believe in the importance of um, the Tibetan democratic, pro uh, democratic process. And we all believe that every Tibetan should take part in these elections. But SFT as an organization absolutely do not endorse any candidates or support any candidates, nor have we endorsed or supported any candidates in the past. And SFT, as an organization, you know, our focus is to focus on China and target Beijing and the CCP. You know, it's in our mission to focus on the bigger picture, to end China's occupation inside Tibet. So whatever the internal politics or whatever the gossip, the talks might be, SFT will not change three things. We'll never change three things. And that is, one, we will not change our belief 
that strategic nonviolence is the path to winning our freedom and justice inside Tibet. <laughs> Two, we will never give up the, our belief in the power of youth leadership. Because the youth are the change makers for Tibet. And last but not least, we will never change or compromise our love and respect and admiration and devotion to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. So at SFT, you know, we think that all of, that we can't afford to be distracted away from the realities that the Tibetan nation is facing. You know, China's trying to destroy everything that we love about Tibet. So we don't have time to be distracted by petty issues. Okay? Because China right now is playing this huge game with the world. Like a huge game. They're, they're like creating an illusion right now. They're masking their ugly truth of their authoritarian nature. Xi Jinping's trying to portray himself as the good guy here. You know, he's clamping down on corruption. He's ending, just ended the one-child policy. He's been seen taking selfies with British football players, drinking pints of beer with David Cameron. You know, we know he's not the good guy here. This is just a PR, this is just China using PR strategy to show to the world and to us that they're like us, that they're a modern and progressive nation. It's, it's fake. It's China being fake, like a fake Gucci bag being sold in Canal Street. <laughs> it looks so real, but it's so fake. <laughs> Xi Jinping is not a reformer, and he, he's a hardliner. And, you know, no hardline policy inside Tibet has been reversed. And how do we know this? How do I know this? Because we just have to look back at the last three years of what Xi Jinping's doing inside Tibet. We just have to read the statements that he's been making on Tibet and about against His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And the recent um, announcement that his government has made on the new policies inside Tibet. And then we just have to listen to what Tibetans inside of Tibet are saying. Through their music, through their art, through their paintings, through their mass protests, their sit-ins. Their one-man protests, the environmental work that they're doing, and their calls for Tibetans to support Tibetan businesses rather than Chinese ones, and of course the self relations So, from the simplest actions to the most dramatic or drastic actions, Tibetans inside Tibet are telling us through their acts of resistance the realities of the situation in the ground inside Tibet, and we have to listen to them. Because they are telling us to resist. They are telling us to take action and build this global campaign to pressure China to make change inside Tibet. So what do we need to do? We need to work together. We need to continue to support our youth leadership. We need to confront China wherever they go around the world. We need to expose their lies and their brutalities inside Tibet. And it doesn't matter whatever you believe in. Umilam, Langzen or something else, I think we can all agree here that we want the repression in Tibet to end. We want... We want Tibetans inside Tibet to, to get the justice and the freedom and their rights that they deserve. And how do we do that? We have to continually challenge China every opportunity. We have to drive the cost of the occupation and lower their benefits. And for us to effectively do this, we need to, like I said, work together to build our movement. And when we do this, we have to treat each other with respect and kindness because we're too small of a community not to. And we need to embrace diversity because that only makes us stronger. So if we focus on the real issues, do all of these things, Tibet will be victorious. And let me tell you, 
This is not gossip. This is truth. Pergelo.